joining us from Cape Town now is AXIS CEO Andrew Bradley. Andrew, let's start with the fact that the one thing we know for sure is that we are in uncertain times, potentially uncharted territory, and we've got to go back to asking you what you are advising your clients to do in the current uncertain climate. Well, I, I think the key factor to look at in times of uncertainty is to go back and make sure that you are very clear with what you're trying to achieve because this is certainly uh, not the time for speculation because any speculation that you do in, in times like this uh, heightens your risk uh, quite dramatically. We've seen volatility at uh, quite extreme levels and uh, we need to make sure that we're very clear on what we're trying to focus on. So I if you uh, are looking long term or, or slightly shorter term, irrespective of what your time focus uh, is, make sure you, you're very clear. Uh, I think you, you need to have uh, a good balance in, in your portfolio with uh, good property allocation, equity, bonds, cash, uh, and some offshore. So the, the most uh, broadly diversified you can be, the better. But don't be taking risks right now. Andrew Wainia, do you think that the general ad investor out there is becoming more sophisticated with the introduction of you know financial planning proper needs analysis proper cash flow analysis do you think they're getting better and almost by implication do you think they can ride out the bad times better than in the past because as we all know everyone's a long-term investor until you start losing money then people become very short-term orientated mm -hmm. Uh, when I, I think that's uh, an, an exceptionally good and, and a very subtle uh, question in a number of respects. I think that the key thing is uh, in, investors are becoming more sophisticated in, in a number of ways. I think information uh, and is increasing, not necessarily knowledge and understanding though, but information is. And I think uh, on the contrary, rather than making people more sophisticated and, and more comfortable in looking longer term, they actually have a shorter term bias. So with all the information around, it uh, should be leading to uh, better investment decisions, but sadly is not. So I think the subtlety is all about how advisors go about advising their clients have a significant influence. I think where we see uh, clients going through a risk profiling approach, and we've previously discussed that, uh, that can have very significant negative uh, consequences because as we know uh, if you are, are looking at planning from a cash flow point of view to make sure that you can need, take care of future cash flow needs then risk profiling is not the way to go and that can assist you and prevent you from uh, cashing in at the wrong time and being too short term so if you've got a long term goal or medium term goal as long as you're focused on the goal and you've got the appropriate strategies in place and managing it uh, uh, responsibly, then we're seeing people are being uh, less short-term focused. But in the absence of that, I think uh, the equity risk premium uh, is, is yet to stay because people are panicking and taking their money out and uh, creating value for those that do stick it out. Talking about that short-termism, there's also the element of getting carried away by momentum. And if we look at gold hitting that new all-time high of $1,911 an ounce last week, we've got gold in a rally again with that panic in the market. Are clients phoning you up and saying, we want gold exposure right now? Uh, I think uh, any time there's volatility and any time there's something that looks spectacular, uh, people are always keen to know why they shouldn't be there. And uh, you know, gold has been a, a, v a very good place to be uh, over the last uh, while. But I think if, if one looks longer term, what the prospects uh, for gold are, you know, it uh, uh, you know, doesn't have many fundamentals in place uh, to say that you know, there's good value there. So you know, I'm personally of the school of thought that whatever you pay for gold is, is too much, um, but uh, clearly uh, been very wrong over the last while. But I think from an investment point of view, uh, those uh, sort of new stories I think uh, for investors who are looking to speculate and trying to make a quick buck, very, very dangerous. I think uh, sort of responsibly looking, gold is more propensity to go down than, than up uh, from, from these levels over the long term. You know, in the short term, there might still be a little bit more uh, upside, uh, but a lot of volatility. But is the value there? 
plain and simply from our perspective, no. So if you're going to gold, clear you are speculating and taking on a substantive risk. There's no cash flow that comes with it. Uh, I'll, take the, I'll take the liberty of forwarding yeah. all the emails from the gold bulls that I get after the show yeah. tonight to you tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, gold Wayne. people, when you, when you discuss gold, people get very emotional about, about things. Uh, I read an interesting yeah. article today, actually, talking about, you know, everyone says keep emotions out of investments, but everyone told you they're passionate about investments and passion is an emotion. So I don't quite see how those two add together. But Andrew, on a more, <laughs> uh, more, more pertinent point, given your overview of markets and where they are now, not necessarily what you're advising your clients to do, because that's very dependent on each client's individual circumstances. But what sectors do you like? Where, where sort of where's your uh, value? Where do you see value? What, uh, what do you see as an opportunity now? I, th I think uh, when what our research and investment management team uh, do on behalf of our clients on an ongoing basis is is looking where that uh, relative uh, value. Uh, is and you know uh, I think uh, in our assessment uh, from a long-term ba basis, uh, offshore uh, you're seeing some some value there. So uh, particularly some of the valuations uh, in, in the equity space are, are, are looking very very attractive uh, in that regard. Uh, our, our views uh, in terms of of local equity is that it's uh, you know pretty uh, fairly valued. Um, you know not 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 too much. Uh, uh, under underpricing there, and, and obviously at an asset class level, within certain equities, obviously always from time to time uh, some opportunities that arise. So, you know, broadly speaking, uh, some some money offshore and in equities, not a significant uh, um, undervaluation, but uh, certainly long term, some good prospects there in, in our opinion. Andrew, how do you see the RAND playing out? Now, I know it's very difficult to, to forecast where the local unit is going, and you mm. are looking through all mm. the noise to that longer-term view. We're currently mm. sitting at 708 on dollar RAND, going retracing to Women's Day recently. Mm. We hit 760, just showing the volatility mm. and the mm. ability of that RAND to retrace its ground very, very quickly. Mm. Again, um, I, I wish I could try and sound uh, and look intelligent and say I, I knew, haven't got the foggiest idea. I think the key issue with, with currency um, is that, as you say, it is so volatile and, and trying to play in that space is exceptionally uh, dangerous. I think uh, what, what makes the RAND particularly more volatile and, and dangerous to play is that uh, we often looked at as the, the proxy for emerging markets. So, you know, the sentiment. Uh, that could be happening in other emerging markets is going to have as big, if not a bigger influence on what happens to the RAND. So stuff happening elsewhere in the world uh, is going to have uh, that impact. So trying to read that is, uh, is very difficult. Looking at from a pure valuation uh, point of view, um, you know, the RAND in terms of, again, simple fundamentals uh, looks uh, slightly, uh, you know, slightly uh, expensive at, at the moment, so you know, slightly overvalued. Let's focus on that long-term view and given all the noise in the, the global environment at the moment, we've got the US potentially going into a double dip recession, we've got the Eurozone with a potential sovereign default on the horizon. Is this just regular news in your view? You know, you were talking earlier about looking through the cycles. Is this something different or do you just see it as more market activity of a regular nature, perhaps a little bit more extreme, but five years out we're going to be saying, well, what was that all about? I, I think uh, generally noise like that in the system, uh, you know, one can look through a cycle. I think there are a couple of fundamental uh, shifts here that, that could have longer term implications. And, and if one looks at uh, the situation in, in uh, America and in Europe, I think the, from a longer term point of view, getting out uh, of, the, of the hole they're in could take a lot, lot longer. So I think, uh, yes, you can say look through the cycle, and that's important, but that cycle might take an exceptionally long uh, time to, to come through. So uh, although we're seeing corporate America in a number of respects uh, showing good uh, profit numbers, but uh, from a long-term growth perspective, we're seeing the South African growth uh, numbers coming through. From a long-term growth perspective, uh, I think it's going to be 
a good number of years before we can get back to uh, anything like normal. Um, you know, we keep talking about and what has been referred to as this new normal. Very simply, I think we've got to get used to significantly lower uh, growth numbers uh, coming through. And, and clearly, that has an impact. So if you are approaching retirement or uh, in retirement, you know, what does that mean for you? You have to get used to the fact that there is a significant probability that the growth that you would have expected from your investments and particularly from equities is not going to be de uh, delivering at the exceptionally high levels that we've had, particularly in our markets for the last 10 years. In our markets over you know, the last 10 years, there has been a lot of excess return. So if you're banking on that, you're going to be in trouble. So I think it's critical to be realistic, uh, very realistic and what to expect. There's not going to be significant growth by all accounts. And uh, so although, yes, look through the cycle and it's important to look long term and, and things will correct itself, it's going to be, when it corrects itself, very, very slow and uh, pedestrian to what we compare to. So you have to take that into consideration when uh, you're going about uh, your daily lives and how you're spending your money and, and uh, what you're expecting for the future. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Look forward to having you again in the hot seat in thank the you. near future. Andrew Bradley is the CEO of Access.